What is up everybody and welcome to this Dash and Plotly tutorial series in Python. Uh, we're just going to be learning about the fundamentals of how to use this really great framework to build great web apps uh, just with a Python script. And as you can see right here, it's a combination of basically using um, Flask, Plotly, um, and a couple other libraries as well. And it's really, really useful because it's super easy um, and there's really not much to it. Um, as it says right here, there's no JavaScript required and you can end up building uh, apps like these, right? So uh, just one thing to note, it's just a single page. We're not going to be building a huge application like we would be doing with Django or something like that where you have multiple URLs and all this crazy stuff going on. But this is really the power of what we can do. So as you can see right here, we're using the Salesforce API and I got this from the Dash app gallery uh, and we're just using different dropdowns to kind of filter different graphs. So this is really good for just basic data analysis. Uh, and you can see that we have a data table at the bottom too. So I'll just go back one page and this is the Dash app gallery. Um, I'll link all of the uh, different external links I used in this in the description so you guys can get to them pretty easily. And Dash is a comparable uh, framework or library in Python to Shiny and R. So R, if you don't know, is a scripting language that isn't so much similar to Python, but it's used for a lot of the same purposes like machine learning and graphing. Um, R actually, the ggplot library is uh, pretty much native to R. So yeah, R is uh, R and Shiny is very similar to Dash and Plotly. It's just Dash is a little newer, um, and we're using Python instead of R. <laughs> so we're going to be making something like an interactive stock chart here, uh, and we'll probably make a table at the bottom. We're just going to get the basics of Dash and how to structure our HTML and use callbacks, which are basically functions to allow us to update data and different stuff like that. So yeah, I think we're ready to get going right into this to install dependencies uh, that we're going to need for our project. So let's get right to it. Alrighty, guys. So the first thing you're going to need is a version of Python. I specifically recommend 3.6 and above to follow along with this tutorial series with ease. Um, 3.7 recently came out and I just downloaded that. Uh, but I recommend 3.6 because you're already going to have pip installed and it's just going to be easier to follow along. Um, with that being said, we're going to go now into the Dash installation procedure. So we're right in the Dash documentation. Um, and we just have to install these libraries right here. So we have uh, four different libraries. And all we're going to do is go to our terminal or command prompt and type in pip3. If you just installed 3.7 or 3.6, you can do this as well. Um, on other machines, if this doesn't work for you, you can type in pi-m pip install and then X, Y, Z, whatever application you want or package. So I'll just demonstrate it with pip3. And you don't have to worry about the uh, version at the end of it. So it should say I already have this installed. Sometimes it takes a minute. Yep. So I already have all these installed. Um, I would also include table at the end. So yeah, that's just a demonstration of how you would install these packages. Um, and if you're still having a little bit of trouble, uh, specifically with environment variables, uh, I will go into later detail or link something in the description as well if you're having trouble with that. Because uh, that's sometimes a problem for installing packages in pip. Uh, but once we're done with that, we can go to the next step, which will be actually creating our Python script. So let's go there next. Alrighty guys, I'm in PyCharm right now. This is a Python IDE made by JetBrains. So you can find that right here. Um, yeah, right here. And you wanna download the community edition. I'm gonna try and get this out of here. So this is actually a really good IDE for Python. It makes your life super easy. And when you get into more complex Python applications, which is uh, more of a real world situation rather than just using idle or something like that, uh, it just makes your life so much easier. So if you're making a web app or doing maybe a, a Python project with multiple files or something like that, this is the IDE for you. So if you do choose to follow along in PyCharm with me in this tutorial series, the first thing that you want to do is change your Python interpreter. So I have 3.7. I downloaded all my dependencies in 3.7. Thus, I'm going to set it to 3.7 for the project interpreter. Um, I'm not going to go in detail on finding the interpreter, but 
I'll point you in the right direction. So uh, I have mine in this directory that's pre-installed. Sometimes PyCharm will automatically find it. In this case, it does. Um, and also you can create a virtual environment too. And I have other uh, dependencies installed to 3.4 as well. And you can find it in that uh, directory right there. So that's another Python interpreter for 3.4. But for the most part, you can point it to the executable file that is the PyCharm interpreter. Um, and yeah, so that's pretty much that for the interpreter. So once we've correctly configured the interpreter, we can check that it worked by importing uh, anything really. And we can see right here, we have a path that's auto-generated for our different libraries and frameworks that we have. Um, so I went ahead and imported everything right off the bat. You can copy and paste that directly. Uh, so I also abbreviated the dash core components and HTML components as well, just for ease of, ease of use. Uh, so we can start by saying app equals dash dot dash, and then a set of parentheses. That basically initializes our app. And then we can say app dot layout equals HTML dot div. And we'll have a div element that encases basically everything in our dash app. So don't be afraid of HTML in this case. It's really, you really don't even need to know HTML uh, for this. Just know that this one element is basically going to contain all our other elements. And the layout basically sets the layout as you would assume for our web app. So that's kind of all it is. It's just going to contain all of our div elements and all of our HTML elements that we're going to include in our dash app. Um, so with that being said, I'm going to include a h1 tag, so that's a header tag. And I'm just going to say children equals hello world. So that's going to be our label. And what we're going to put next is if underscore underscore name underscore underscore equals equals and then underscore underscore main. And what we're going to say is app dot run server in debug mode. So just to go through everything that we wrote down right there, it might be a little confusing, but all we're saying right here is if the file name that is assigned here is main, then we're actually going to run our server. So what this does, and you've probably seen this a few times before, in Python, if you have multiple files within the project, uh, they need a place to, or they, uh, the interpreter needs a place to start, right? So what is essentially going to happen is uh, a main name is going to be assigned to the Python file that uh, we're going to be running all our code from, from the start, and the interpreter will check for that. So in this case, we have one file, so it's going to get automatically assigned the name main. If you had multiple files, though, you really want to put these statements in here to make sure you're running from the correct position from the start. And all we're going to do is run server right here, which basically means that we're just running our application. And we're going to run it in debug mode because we really want to do that. Uh, we don't have a production server yet, but if you were uh, running a production server, uh, I would advise probably not debugging on that. Uh, it's probably not a good idea, uh, especially if you have people using your server um, or web app. But yeah, let's go ahead and run this. And we'll wait for a sec. And you can see right here, uh, the app is running on our local machine, which is represented by this uh, URL right here. So we can click on that. And we can see right here, <laughs> I actually misspelled hello. Whoops. So let's just fix that. And this is actually a good representation of what you can do with Dash. So everything is live right here. So when we make changes and then press uh, Command or Control S, we can see that if we reload our server or web app, we can see the changes right there. So everything in this sense is live um, until you get to a bug. So if I did something like this, we can see right here that uh, the execution is going to stop because we made a syntax error. So uh, basically, that's it for the first tutorial. I think that's uh, where I want to end off. And in the next tutorial, we're going to be talking more about uh, different HTML elements and how we're going to structure our project. That wraps it up for this tutorial, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, in the next tutorial, we're going to be going even more into Dash, and there's going to be further ones after that. So stay tuned for updates, and don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. Thank you, and see you later.